I'm Frank on Camnet. Good evening wherever you are, all over the world, including in Azamia. I'm Frank Montabella. Before my mom, you know, died, she wanted me to be a reverend because her husband was a reverend. And as a son, my mom wanted me to be a reverend. We quarreled so many times. It took me a long time to convince her that I was a reverend in my own right. Whilst the husband preached to two or three hundred people, I told mom I preached to millions of viewers. She did appreciate and she died a very happy person. My guest today comes from a very strong Christian in a background. But away from what I've talked about, he went on to be a man of the caller, a reverend, a pastor, and now a politician. I wouldn't say a man of the caller turned politician. He combines in a both. My guest on this program, the president of New Hope MMD. Dr. Nevas Mumba. Good evening. My pleasure to have you on Frank on Camlet. Thank you so much, Frank. What a wonderful definition of what you should have been, a right. preacher of the gospel. I've been preaching <laughs> in what I'm doing for the That's last true. 50 years or so. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well done. Welcome to my show. Thank First, you. this is a different ball game you know, in terms of the election in terms of the campaign, and we'll be coming to the significance of this uh, you know, election. But let's delve very quickly into the campaign. You've just you know, come from uh, you know, Kefue and Kanyama in the peri-urban. This is a different ballgame. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And um, we must also state that um, all of us are aware of yeah. the COVID-19 pandemic. Mm -hmm. We've never had elections under such uh, an environment mm -hmm. or atmosphere. And this really is going to be a test of our democracy mm -hmm. and our capacity to manage uh, different um, developments that come along our way as a young nation. Mm -hmm. And yet we are not abrogating our responsibilities to democracy. Mm -hmm. So with COVID-19 out there and a proposal to the political parties mm -hmm. that we don't hold meetings that are going to attract yeah. um, you know the problem of uh, the COVID-19 being spread or creating mm -hmm. super spread um, uh, events like mm -hmm. rallies and mm -hmm. things like that uh, and I just wanted to mention here that I think what is going to make the thing, this thing succeed Frank mm -hmm. is not just rhetoric as we're going to come to some of mm -hmm. the, our discussion today uh, I think that there are very few political leaders that would like to risk um, what is involved in losing this election. Mm. So we are not ready or willing to do anything that does not involve everybody. Mm. I don't mind you know, playing soccer on an ocean right. if the other team is also going to be on the ocean. Right. But to play soccer when I'm on the ocean and the other team is on the land, mm -hmm. I think that does not go well. So mm -hmm. I pray that this, the stakeholders, those of us that are involved mm -hmm. in this campaign, must understand that the decision mm -hmm. of who becomes the next president of this country yeah. is left fairly in the hands of the Zambians mm -hmm. so that they make hard decisions because mm -hmm. that is what shall sustain peace and tranquility. Already you give me an impression that this election is not fair. It's not going to be fair, free, and acceptable. Is no, that no. what you're saying? No, 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 absolutely not. Yeah. I'm saying that if we do not... Because do, the ground doesn't seem to be even. Yeah, but we can do this. We can fix this. Of course, there are problems, because yeah. leading up to this election, obviously, um, you know, the opposition has been greatly disadvantaged. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is not a secret. Everybody knows that, including non-politicians. Mm -hmm. But at least we are calling on all stakeholders, mm -hmm. especially government, to ensure that these three months ahead of this election, mm -hmm. the least they can do is to show equity mm -hmm. by instructing or directing the police to get out of politics mm -hmm. and protect us as stakeholders mm -hmm. and not attack us. Mm -hmm. This is why I said last week that 
The movement for multi-party democracy demands that the police withdraw this military hardware that they are placed on the streets. They have to decide, do we want the democracy to work or do we want a militarized state or a police state? You see, Zambia being a Christian nation and a very peaceful nation, we don't need those tanks on the streets because if they are going to be tanks on the street, then the best thing to do is for the president to call back parliament and legislate against anyone holding a public rally in a time of a pandemic. Because there is no law that exists that stops me from having a rally. We have been advised not to have rallies because of COVID-19. So I think that if the police get on the, on, the, on the road and try to shoot at us or shoot at anybody, because they have not even defined what is a, what is a rally. Mm -hmm. Frank, I go to um, you know, Woodland Stadium there, and, and, and uh, as I walk there, mm -hmm. 7,000 people want to come and greet this presidential candidate. Yeah. And, and they're stretching their hands to greet me. Is that a rally mm -hmm. or in view of COVID-19, or is it not a rally? Mm -hmm. So they have to define what a rally is. Because right now, as I've just come back from Kafue. Yeah. We have been campaigning. I mean, there have been people everywhere. We are giving them masks mm -hmm. in every one of my meetings. We are moving with masks to make sure they are masked up. But even then, you can't avoid them trying to squeeze on you. Mm -hmm. And so we need to define this. Because a policeman can come yeah. and say, Nevers, you are holding a rally. Let's go uh, to the police station and uh, we'll sort you out. And we cannot have that. If PF can't yeah. do it, I mean, if PF can do it, we must do it. If PF can't do it, then we shouldn't do it. Do you know the reason? Because I'm asking you this question because you are a player in this, uh, you know, important you know, game. Do you know why the police are heavily armed? I don't like speculation, but all I know is that it is wrong and they need to get the tanks off the street. Yeah. It doesn't auger too well. I'll tell them this. Let them realize that these elections are different from all other elections. The stakes are extremely high. So everyone is emotional about this election. Zambians are very emotional about this election. So if a bullet is shot, tear gas is thrown, and there's defiance by us political leaders and the Zambian people mm -hmm. against the police. We are going to see a development of something that we don't need. Mm -hmm. Because there comes a time when people either want change or they want their vote to count, that they don't care what the bullet does to them. And once the police begin to wield those bullets mm -hmm. uh, in, around their necks and everywhere, it emboldens um, the citizens who want to participate freely in this election. Our advice is get those tanks off the streets. We've got enough law, we've got enough legislation to punish anybody who abrogates the provisions of the law. But please, I beg of you, get those things off the street. This is a democracy, a Christian nation, and those things should only come in if there's an insurrection that threatens the lives of the Zambian people. Tell me, I haven't seen you cry. The other day you were crying. You know, does this point to the significance of these elections? Or what is going through your mind? What, why did you become so emotional? Why are you so emotional? I've been interviewing you for a very long time. This is a new moment to me. Frank, first of all, I appreciate the fact that you recognize how many times you have interviewed yeah. me. And I was telling someone today that I'm rushing to the studio because Frank is interviewing me. Frank has a way of getting things out of me that I'm not ready to give to the nation. But of course, you've been 50 years in this, in this yeah. job, so you know exactly yeah. how to trick yeah. us uh, yeah. and give you answers we are not ready to. Look, I, I have been passionate about my country mm. for many years. I am not in politics for the same reason politicians are in politics. Mm. For me, it's a, it's, it's, it's a passion from God. Mm -hmm. It's a call from God. And I have, when, my, when I was born, my father prayed a prayer. My mother was dying. My mother was dying in Chitambo Mission when I was born. Mm -hmm. And she stopped talking, and, and there was panic. My father came and prayed this prayer. And he told me this himself. He said, God, if you will save my wife and she will not die, mm -hmm. I'll dedicate this boy 
to the service of God and to the service of country. These two things. Mm. Now, when I started to preach, I never thought at any point that I would ever become a politician. Mm. I forgot completely about the second part of my father's prayer, mm. that he shall save country. Mm. Now, if this is 61 years later, mm. Frank, okay? And I realize the journey that I've been through has been not about me to become a businessman or to make money or to become rich. It has been public service all my life. Yeah. Either praying for the sick, helping people in their homes, answering their questions, counseling them, bringing peace in their homes and in their hearts. That's all that I've done. Then I went into the political process in order to serve. I left the vice presidency like somebody was laughing at me with nothing in my hands. I didn't steal a dime because that's not why I am in politics. Mm -hmm. So to see us walk this journey mm -hmm. until today, it reminded me of the story of Joseph in the Bible. Mm -hmm. Joseph had a dream, and the dream basically was he was going to lead his brothers. Mm -hmm. But the things he went through, the dungeon in which he was thrown, mm -hmm. how he was sold to the Amalekites by his own brothers, mm -hmm brought into um, the home of Potiphar and accused falsely by Potiphar's wife mm -hmm. and thrown in jail for something he never did. Mm -hmm. And when he helped people in that jail, they went out and forgot about him. Mm -hmm. And then finally, Frank, mm -hmm. Joseph finds himself at the end of his dream and journey yeah. in the palace. Yeah. The brothers come and bow before him. Mm -hmm. He remembers that this is that which God said to me. Mm. Instead of saying, yeah. he goes a totally different angle. The Bible says he cried. Mm. And I've been interrogating as a preacher, why did he cry? Mm. And as I was asking that question when I was giving the speech, because mm. it hit me right there on the platform, I realized he was not crying because he was sad. Mm. He was crying because of the faithfulness of God. Yeah to bring him this far. Mm. And I think that if we do not have political leaders mm. that have a reason to serve the people of this country, he served his brothers, mm. made sure they did not die from hunger, regardless of what they did to him. And I felt in that moment, Frank, mm. God telling me on that platform when I spoke the other day, mm. yesterday, that I have brought you this far, not to be bitter. I've brought you this far to prove that all that you have gone through is preparation for the job and the assignment I'm about to give to you. As a That's rider, as a rider, you know, to that, you know, you started in a victory ministry many, many years ago. Your crusade was Zambia shall be free. Saved. S saved, sorry. Yes. In many aspects, yes. the country is not, you know, sad. Are you repositioning yourself to start a new journey to start a new approach to ensure that you realize what is set out to do and in saying so is this the period the election that defines who you are and indeed who are you that's a loaded question loaded question yeah yeah first of all let me uh begin from where you've started. Yeah. Is this the Zambia shall be saved mm. process? Mm. The mm. answer, Frank, is yes. It dawns, on, it dawns on me as I live on that I'm actually living a, a real dream. Mm. Sometimes I forget that I'm walking it when I'm in jail, for instance. I'm la in lang languishing in, in Chimbokaila. Sometimes I forget these things that are part of this process. Mm. But I want to confirm to you you talked about Victory Ministries. Yeah. Victory Ministries was started when I was very young. Mm. I was hardly 19 years old mm. when God called me into ministry. Mm. And at that time, the content of Christianity in Zambia was less than 45%. I'm talking about real evangelical, Pentecostal, charismatic Christians in this country, mm. including Catholics and everybody. We were not at the level at which we are today. Mm. I preached this gospel for years, everywhere I could find human beings mm -hmm. in this country, until Victory Ministries became an international organization, respected mm -hmm. in Europe, respected yeah. in the United States. When I get to the United States to preach, I, heard, I had people 
that would only listen to the big preachers come to mm -hmm. listen to me. So a little Zambian boy from Chinsali developed a ministry and a passion for Zambia shall be saved. Mm -hmm. When I stand here, and I look at President Chiruba declaring Zambia a Christian nation. Mm -hmm. It's all part of the process of the fulfillment of the Zambia shall be saved dream. There's no other country mm -hmm. on the continent of Africa with the credentials of being a Christian nation mm -hmm. enshrined in the provisions of our constitution. Mm -hmm. it, it, this thing happening in Zambia is unique, but they will never, like you, Frank, mm -hmm. in your uh, journalism journey, mm -hmm. Not everybody will appreciate what you've done, but mm. you have been a trailblazer mm. in this field. Mm. Very few people are going to say, Frank, we salute you. Mm. It's the same thing in church. Mm. We've come a long way. We preach this gospel to some people that, you know, today are so well placed, mm. but they forget where they came from. And all they think about is that this thing happened on its own, but it didn't. To answer your question, mm. is Zambia saved? Mm. I think spiritually speaking, at 97.3% Christian, mm -hmm. Zambia is at 97.3% Christian. Mm -hmm. I can attest to the fact that we have run a good race. Mm -hmm. We have truly run a good race and brought Zambia to become the prime nation called Christian nation. Mm -hmm. I don't claim to have been the only one that did that, but I am glad that I was part of that process and the many dignified men and women of God that God used to bring this country where she is. The question now you ask, mm. is this that moment when you now want to swing your cameras mm. to the political emancipation and salvation of our country? In the same way, Frank, that the church has risen because we put in everything we did, I have no doubt yeah. that Zambia shall rise. Remember, mm. the words the prayer of David Livingston were very clear in Chitambo, exactly the same place I was born. Mm. And he prayed on his knees. He said, he said on, these ben, on these my bended knees, mm. I pray that this nation shall become a mighty, not just a Christian nation, but a mighty Christian nation. Mm. More than a hundred years ago, um, more than... Um, a hundred years ago, 160 years ago, he says, I pray that it shall become a mighty Christian nation and a beacon of light mm. to the rest of the world. You've made reference to the importance you know, of uh, you know, Christians, men and you know, women, who have answered the, the calling of God. My, my, my question is, you know, even the 3% or so you, you've made reference to, why is it that? Some men and women of the caller, men and women who have answered the calling from God. Today, it's like they've been in a captured, and I will be coming to the economy very shortly. Is this an economic problem, you know, that has overrun them? I preach a message entitled The Spirit of the Age. Yeah. The spirit of the age is that any na every nation is under a certain spell of supernatural powers. Mm. It's there's a spirit that runs that country. And today we have a situation in Zambia where poverty has ridden, mm -hmm. has really um, um, touched everybody in this country, including the clergy. And I, I must mention that the moment the church compromises its position in society, the society begins to go down. Mm -hmm. So it is true that we are running a deficit of courage mm -hmm. in the church leadership. Mm -hmm. that we, a lot of us support, for instance, a political leader mm -hmm. or a political party because it's convenient. Mm -hmm. It's the, where the wind is blowing. Mm -hmm. And when believers and church leaders begin to go with the wind in support for mm -hmm. politics, mm -hmm. for instance, they'll look at, you know, I'll give you a very good example. They'll look at the battles that I've gone through to try to establish space for the church in the political world. Mm -hmm. I, I have gone to try to go this way, but the challenges have been many. Mm -hmm. And when some believers or church leaders look at me, they don't look at me as a good investment to invest their vote mm -hmm. in, because mm -hmm. the, the, the wind, according to them, is going for a, an unbeliever. Even if it's an unbeliever, they will support that unbeliever. Yeah. So the issue of values is not important to some preachers. Mm -hmm. But to follow the wind where everybody is going is what they consider this is the will of God. Even their prophecies, a lot of prophetic utterances mm -hmm. by a lot of young uh, prophets today, it's not because God has spoken. Mm -hmm. All they do is read the mass newspaper, 
-hmm. see who has got the most uh, number of uh, uh, fitengues, mm -hmm. which political party has more money than the other, and say, I woke up at 2 o'clock this morning and the Lord showed me that this man is going to be president. Mm -hmm. And they go to give him the prophecy because they see the wind going that way. Mm -hmm. But there's a scripture in the book of Kings, and I was reading it today for my devotions, mm -hmm. that when they were looking for God, the prophet Elijah, uh, Elijah, they said, yeah. there is God in the wind. When the mountains were being broken, said, there is God, but there was no God. In a strong wind, there was no God. In a loud noise, there was no God. But the voice of God was in a still, small voice. And I want to say to the Zambian mm. church, that time has come. And this is why I'm running for president. Because I know that we are able to win this election. It will take the church to turn and do God's will. And I am president. But until the church does that, I may struggle to get there. Mm. The authority to make me president is in the hands of the church. Mm. But it's the Lord who, who shall turn their hearts. Because sometimes yeah. they would rather go the easy way. Mm. Oh, PF has more money than, than MMD and Nevers. MMD has had more problems than any other political parties. But they are not voting for, for MMD. Mm. They're voting for a Christian brother. And if I stand on any platform, I'm still the same Nevers Mumba. So when they say we can't vote you for you because of MMD, I'm not mm. asking them to vote for MMD. So I think yeah. it is important for me to say this, because if I don't say it, I may be misunderstood. There are many preachers who have failed to stand strong. I'll be going to the economy. Before I leave that subject, there are a number of good people in the world, preacher men, who have tried to be president. Some have become you know, president. There was a, pres there was a president in Haiti. It was, was, a, was a Christian, was a pastor, was a reverend. President Carter was a man of you know, God. Um, you're a man of God. In most cases, two things happen. Sometimes, most times, the elector electorate cannot embrace these people. And then when, when they get into office, the first you know, challenge is they are virtually fought by some of the people who put them in, in office. Can you reconcile this and why we find it difficult to put good people in office? First of all, I, I think those examples you've given are fantastic. But I'll give us our own story here in Zambia. I came back from Canada as High Commission after my term of office mm -hmm. ended. I came back and they asked me if I could run for president for MMD. Mm -hmm. It had six other candidates, mm -hmm. well-oiled financially. There were former ministers. There was a former minister of finance, former minister of foreign affairs, former minister of, of commerce, former vice president, Kevin Dele, and six others powerful, well-financially oiled people who ran against me. By God's grace, I won that election and became president of MMD. From the first day that I became president of MMD, the fight began. This is what I've been talking exactly. about. Exactly. We must remove this pastor. This is not for church people, and Nevers cannot be president of MMD. The f two weeks later, there were calls that we must go back to the convention, and the fight began. But the good news is my fight has already taken place. So when I become Republican president, they know that Nevers did not get into this thing as a by-the-way thing. Mm -hmm. If I had failed to sustain these fights, to, to take in these blows, mm -hmm. to take in these insults and abandonment and, uh, and, uh, and betrayals, if I had failed to take it in for the past eight years, mm -hmm. I would not have been counted worthy to be able to handle this nation and the criticism and the resistance that they give to men and women of God. But it is right, mm -hmm. Frank, Frank to, uh, to understand that because Jesus was not opposed by people because he offended anybody. Mm -hmm. It's just because he stood on righteousness. Yeah. All you need to do, Frank, to be hated, to be fought against, even voted against, is to, be, to declare your faith in Christ. When Jesus had to be, I mean, a decision had to be made, by um, the, 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 the judges of, to choose between Jesus and Barabbas. Mm. You know, Barabbas was a thief, yeah. and an election was conducted. Mm. By high, high priests were part of the electorate, mm. and they said, can I give you Jesus, 
or should I give you Barabbas? Mm -hmm. When they cast the vote, Barabbas, the criminal, won and defeated Jesus in the vote. Yeah. So it is, I'm agreeing with you, mm -hmm. there's that danger. That is why I decided to go on and fight for the movement for multi-party democracy, but not for the party, mm -hmm. for the principles of democracy. Mm -hmm. And to tell Zambians, yes, I'm a pastor, but I'm also a Zambian and have equal right mm -hmm. to run for any office in this country. And in eight years, Zambians have seen that Nevers is able to fight for a cause, mm -hmm. stay with it, go to jail, be disliked, be abandoned by people who want an easy way out, and still make it to the end. You have ably defined in it yourself. Let me come to another issue, you know, that has to be defined. That defines the country, the economy. This economy, a lot of people are saying, is on intensive, is in intensive care. How do you intend healing it? And indeed, how do you intend sorting out the massive debt? I've deliberately, you know, looked at a number of governance issues which I think are cardinal to the Zambian in, in our people. So that when they're going to make a decision, it's going to be a well-informed, you know, decision. And I want these answers, these questions to be answered. To be answered. Thank you. Uh, Frank, let me calm the nerves of the Zambian people. I think of all the presidential candidates, without overemphasizing the fact, of all of them, I stand a better chance uh, to deal with the current economic crisis. First of all, I have been here before. I was not president, I was vice president. The circumstances under which President Levy Mwanawas and myself and the cabinet that we had operated was very similar to this. Mm -hmm. We were ridden with debt, $7.2 billion. We could not function as a country. Hospitals were empty with medicine, without medicine. Schools had no classroom, I mean, had no desks, and uh, teachers were not being paid, and some schools were literally closing because all the money we had, what we were collecting through revenue, we were paying back our debt. Mm -hmm. But we had to do certain things that made us, first of all, overcome the debt barrier. And I'll go back to the debt first, then I'll come to how mm -hmm. to fix the economy. We had to make a decision that with this debt, there's no way we are going to provide goods and services to mm -hmm. our people. President Manawasa said, until we deal with this debt issue, it doesn't matter what activity we put in place, we still are going to be constrained from development. Mm -hmm. So we focused on dealing with the debt. And it is very easy for any government to do what I have planned to do once we take over. Mm. We'll do exactly the same thing we did and just improve on it. Mm. First of all, you have to go in the way of fiscal discipline, where you now make up your mind that you carry a debt. Mm. We just have to come to a place where we realize you cannot live beyond your means and survive. Mm. You've got to draw back. Mm. So we decided that we were going to cut down on no public expenditure. Mm. We stopped traveling. Ministers, all the perks that were there for ministers, President Wanawasa suspended them. Mm. He stopped traveling as much because when the president travels, it's expensive. Yeah. We were not traveling. Ambassadors and high commissioners were tasked to represent the president and the ministers and permanent secretaries that travel all the time. We cut down a lot. Vehicles that were being driven by ministers and permanent secretaries going anywhere they want in the nightclubs in the night, that stopped. By 6 o'clock, the vehicles were packed, unless you had special permission. Mm -hmm. It's amazing how much money we saved. Again, we went to the civil service. President Manawasa asked me as vice president to negotiate with the unions of public sector to see whether we could freeze their salaries for at least two years mm -hmm. and no increments so that we could all tighten our belts and win the support and the respect of the international community, multilateral lenders that had given us the money. When they watched our discipline and how we disciplined ourselves, mm -hmm. the international community, the multilateral lenders said, you know what, this is a different uh, leadership in Africa. It's determined 
to do what is right. That's how we reached our hippie completion point. But you must also understand that once we dismantled that debt, it opened up the economy to create the economic vibrance that we still feel today. It's dying out now. But that came because now we were free from debt and we could re reinvest that money into the social sector of education, health, and also the development of our children and our youth. So we were investing in our own people with the money we could have given to, um, to the lenders. And uh, therefore, the economy of Zambia grew. It became one of the 10 fastest growing economies in the world. The culture was strong. Um, jobs were available. Yeah. And so we cured the debt issue. Mm. Being voted in as president this August, I will repeat that act, mm. but I'll do it even better and quicker. Then secondly, how do we rebuild this economy? Mm. Look, there's not a singular president, there's not a singular cabinet, and there's not a singular political party that has all the answers to resolving the economic crisis mm. we find ourselves in. Mm. I will not shy away from this problem of the economy taking over as president mm. because it's for all of us. It's been created by PF, but somebody has to resolve it. Mm. To the, they are double, they have all double what we, what we found. We found $7.2 billion. Yeah. The, in 10 years, sir, in 10 years, they have borrowed $12 billion. Mm. Now the figure is on $15 billion. $15 billion in 10 years. That doesn't work. You cannot outborrow your capacity to mm. repay. That's what we have done. The pointing at uh, infrastructure. That has nothing to do with, we still owe money. Because infrastructure must be placed according to how much money you've got. Mm. Look, the, I, I am, I'm a simple preacher. Mm. And sometimes when we're preaching, we use common sense. It's called wisdom in the Bible. Mm. You get 1,000 kwacha per month. Mm. You go and borrow 10,000. Mm. OK? What the implication of that borrowing is that there are certain things you cannot do for the next, mm. I don't know, 10 years until you pay it off. Mm. Um, you may probably have to change your house, you, you live in a house without electricity, mm. you, have to, you have to cut something in order to live that new life. Where we are today, the answer to the rebuilding the economy, because mm. I've already talked about and assured the Zambian people, I've done this before, mm. together with the team that worked with us, with President Levin Wanawasa. I watched the, dis the discipline that he had in order to achieve that. So. The last part of your question, yeah. Frank, if I don't answer it now... Let, let, let me finish with, with, the, with the date. You haven't told me exactly how you're going to dismantle you know, this date. During your time, you know, uh, with your respect, you were very financially disciplined and part of it was forgiven because of a hippie. Some of this is commercial date. Mm -hmm. I'm not so sure whether the lenders you know, would agree to forego you know, this date, what are you going to do with it? Yeah, two things. First of yeah. all, the, re the first reason I gave you to me is one of them, is the most yeah. important. Yeah. In any situation where it involves money, the best thing to do first is to make your name good. Mm -hmm. Just make, have a good name. Mm -hmm. If you have a good name, you can get away with anything. You can negotiate debts and they can even put them away. So That's you, point you become financially disciplined. Yeah, you become financially disciplined, which we are not. And I can give example after example. Mm. The second thing is that, Frank, Zambia is not poor. Mm. In our manifesto, which we are calling a fresh start manifesto, mm. it is very clear there that we have proposed that we are going to declare certain minerals, certain, certain um, mm. emeralds as state uh, national strategic mm. assets, mm -hmm. like gold, diamonds. Mm. Emeralds. These are going to be branded state, um, uh, you know, strategic assets. Mm. You cannot touch them just as you want, because we are going to use these assets to 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 pay off our loans mm. and our debt. Mm -hmm. And the the money globally is held in gold, mm. and we have gold, and we want to make sure that we concentrate on ensuring that that gold that we have mm. is used to make sure we pay off this debt. Mm. That's outside 
acquiring a good name, which I will work on within the first hundred days mm -hmm. to work on cleaning up the name of Zambia, that the international community mm -hmm. begin to rush to Zambia to invest to become part of our economy, because that's how you start to generate money, create industry, because you have investment. Now, this little thing I need to add on. Um, when I was High Commissioner in Canada, mm -hmm. I realized that under the Rupia administration, because he was a businessman, mm -hmm. there was such an interest mm -hmm. in people coming to invest in this country. Mm -hmm. As ambassador, through my hands, more than $7.8 billion mm. was signed through my office as High Commissioner mm. um, with Lumwana Mine, mm. Barry God came through my office as High Commissioner mm. and, we were able, and I saw so many investors coming. Okay. So once the name is good and an investor brings money in Zambia and is assured that he can get his, his, um, his uh, profits out yeah. without being uh, cooked mm. and also Politicians don't make all these funny statements we've heard from PF, you know, saying these businessmen will do this to them, will do this to them. They must be comfortable that there is financial discipline and equity in the manner they handle disputes. Let me tell you one thing, you know, as a man who has played football before and who follows uh, football, you know, big time. In Europe right now, in England, there are a lot of foreign, you know, players who have come into England. They virtually made it difficult for the young blood, the young players you know, in England, mm -hmm. you know, to get into the you know, first team. What am I saying? Are you telling me, don't you run a danger? You flood all these foreign investors into our country. They'll chalk the local business people. Not under my watch. Tell me. The good thing about Never Smumba, the Zambians know he's Pan-Africanist. And that's one thing maybe the international community are going to have to deal with mm -hmm. me. That's why I said what I said about the vaccine. Mm -hmm. We are not a dumping ground. Mm -hmm. We have to make sure the vaccine is right mm -hmm. uh, before we put it down there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, you can't have, uh, you know, uh, President uh, Biden throwing the, uh, the, 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 the vaccine away, saying let other people use it and then we grab it because it's secondhand salaula. No, mm -hmm. I think that the dignity of the Zambians is number one. Mm -hmm. I am not intimidated by Chinese investors. Mm -hmm. I'm not intimidated by European investors. Mm -hmm. I'm not intimidated by American investors because the laws that we shall establish mm -hmm. in this country, first of all, they shall favor the Zambian. Mm -hmm. If anybody invests in this country, they are going to invest according to our regulations. Mm -hmm. They are not going to bulldoze any Zambian. Mm -hmm. Number two, they are not going to take the place of Zambians. If I go and invest in America, the same respect and uh, mm -hmm. uh, acceptability I'll receive there is the same that the Americans will receive. The good thing about you and me, Frank, mm -hmm. is that we have served in international relations mm -hmm. as ambassadors. Yeah. We understand the principle of bilateral relations mm -hmm. and um, the fact that that, you know, if um, America treats our people a certain way, when Americans come here, we treat them the same way. Mm. That's why I was so enthused yeah. when I saw Macron from France yeah. visiting Rwanda. Yeah. When, when President Kagame went to France, he was met by a minister at the airport. Mm -hmm. When Macron went to Rwanda, <laughs> President uh, Kagame sent a minister to meet Macron. Yeah. Now, what that is, it just made me so proud because there's no nation bigger than the other. Mm -hmm. we may be, someone may be richer than you, but we are all human beings. Mm -hmm. So, and African countries have destroyed themselves by behaving like little people with, you know, so scared of the Western world that when a president from America comes, the whole president of Zambia goes and lines up at the airport to welcome him. When our president goes to Washington, sometimes they don't even invite them to the White House. The one who receives them is an undersecretary for, for so many undersecretaries. Mm -hmm. He's the one who receives them at the airport. So I think for me, yeah. Frank, you don't have to worry about that. Let's deal with China. You don't think China is going to intimidate you? Even if a government changes, there's a lot of Chinese investment in, in this country, which you, you won't just say, well, China... You know, I'm Zambian now, I'm a new Zambian now. We're going to deal with each other at par. I mean, China is, China is a giant. Yes. but How do you deal with China? You know, I know we've talked about the date, but now there's still investment, massive investment China has put here, which 
it would still want to protect even with a new government? The first thing I'll do is that I'll sit down with the Chinese mm -hmm. government mm -hmm. and I will give them mm -hmm. the position of Zambia mm -hmm. on how we are going to relate with one another. Mm -hmm. Mutual respect. Mutual respect. Frank, do not mistake the fact that Chinese come here for nothing. Mm -hmm. We have something mm -hmm. as Zambia. Mm -hmm. If we didn't have anything, they would not come here. Mm. It's what we have that we're going to use to leverage our position on the negotiating table. Mm. The, the, China needs our copper, mm. big time. Mm. In fact, the entire world now is after our copper. That's why the copper is more than $10,000 per metric ton because of the demand on copper. Mm. We have the copper. Mm. That makes us powerful, mm. extra powerful. Mm. Second of all, we have land. Chinese people want land. Mm. They need space. So this is what we have. So we said, look, this is what we have. Show us what you've got. Mm. Probably the only thing they have is the money and the expertise of uh, construction, mm. of huge things. And history has always had countries that were good at construction mm. and stuff, and you use them for that. But first, I'll have a negotiation with them mm. and create a clear path mm. of how we are going to work together. You will never get rid of Chinese because mm. We are in a global world, and the Chinese are becoming a factor, but we are going to manage them here. Right. Before I proceed quickly to some of the sectors that will be driving the, the economy, you may be a good president, but with some questionable members of, of your government, I don't think it's, it's very easy to know the characters of all the people you're, you're working with. What has made stop a lot of African you know, you know, governments, even with somebody who is supposed to who mean well, is the people working with them. They become corrupt. And like it is, you know, when you get into the government, you know, you'll find that people are broken economically. You'll be dealing with the civil service, which is politicized, before I even talk about some of the sectors tax in our issues, human resource. I think that look at government as a home, mm. a small business that you run. You, come, you buy a company which has failed mm. because it's been politicized. You know, they, it, people are stealing from it. Mm. The first thing you have to deal with is human resource. Mm. Either you retrain them or retrench them mm. and start afresh. The most complicated thing about governance is to govern a people that are uninformed. Mm -hmm. And that's why when we talk about knowledge economy, like Japan, they don't have much except knowledge. Mm -hmm. Korea, knowledge. China, knowledge. Mm -hmm. Zambia, instead of people using knowledge, they use power. Malaysia, and then I send a Malaysia the whole night only to realize 55 kwacha. Mm -hmm. He has worked for 10 hours. Mm -hmm. That's not smart, mm -hmm. intelligent business. Mm -hmm. And we need to move to that level. And so there are many issues. We come to the police service in this country. I take over this government. Mm -hmm. I cannot use this police in their current form. They are, they are not going to do the, the, the vision I have mm. of a nation that shall be number one on the continent. Either we retrain them or retrench them. That's basically going to happen because this police in their current form cannot serve the Zambian that I want to govern. You're going to have a problem, you know, getting rid of them financially, sir. That's you, why you, we're going to inherit, you know, um, empty, you know, treasure. Yeah, but you have to realize that whatever God said when you possess the new land, you don't remove them at once because mm -hmm. you won't afford it. You'll be eaten by lions. You do it slowly. You do it slowly until you come to a place where you feel now you've got the type of policeman that is going to serve mm -hmm. the interest of the nation. I'm not saying we come there and fire the police. No, no, no. We will start a training program. Mm -hmm. And those that are re retiring, retire them quickly and pay them off. But you can't do it all at once. It will be a process. So that is number one. You go to civil service. It's the same thing. You bring a new regime. And people are very flexible. 
when there's a change of government. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, civil servants, when there's a change of government, they become like pliable people in the president's and that government's hands, waiting to know the sound of the direction of that government. If, like for instance, when Mwanawasa came, the sound from State House was no corruption. Mm -hmm. He just said no. So they now preached amongst themselves in this administration. Mm -hmm. You're caught being corrupt. You're gone. Mm -hmm. So that's what we need to do. I'll, I'll bring my riot act at the beginning mm -hmm. to say, ladies and gentlemen, this yeah. is how we are going to make ourselves better. This is how we are going to make ourselves the leading country on the continent. Mm -hmm. We'll have to forego some things that are not good. Like, for instance, the first thing in our manifesto is order. Mm -hmm. to create order in institutions. In other words, there must be a system in which you run a country so that when you go to, to an office, mm -hmm. you know what you're expecting and how they're going to do it. And this is what the order that I'm talking about. Order starts from, I can come to your house, Frank, mm -hmm. and I'll know whether you're a man with order. Mm -hmm. You know, I find the Mipika in the, in the sitting room, I find a Mataolo public sitting room, there's no order. Mm -hmm. Zambia needs to be an orderly country. When you drive through the streets of Cairo Road, you must be able to see the cleanliness that you want to see. Like Rwanda, like Vindhook in Namibia. They have done it. Some of the countries have done it. And, um, and people like to come there as tourists because it's nice, it's clean. Yeah. You start with those little things, clean the drainages so that cholera disappears, clean the drain so that malaria disappears. We are going to do that within the first hundred days and make sure Zambia becomes becomes a country to talk about. I'll be talking about you know, agriculture very shortly. But before I do that, a healthy nation, an educated nation, is potentially a wealthy nation. How are you going to deal with these two key social sectors, education, health? Like I said, the first place to improve those two sectors, those are social sectors yeah. that no, do not necessarily generate uh, income mm -hmm. or revenue. So you, they have to depend on economic sectors like agriculture, mm -hmm. mining, uh, tourism. Those are the ones that feed into the social sector. Mm -hmm. But I, I think for me, the first thing that needs to happen mm -hmm. is to ensure that every Zambian is educated to understand the importance of education mm. and invest enough in education so that it become, Zambia becomes a knowledge-based economy, mm. a knowledge-based nation. Mm. In the absence of knowledge, all we have will be cadres shouting on the streets, doing deals that don't happen, this can, don't help this country to become any better. And so we shall invest heavily mm. in education because basically today, if you are not educated, they'll throw you under the bus. Mm. It's gone, you are gone. So our children moving now forward. I want to invest in my cadres. Mm. I hate to see them starting to shout uh, you know, um, political messages looking like criminals mm. and die like criminals. Mm. I want them to have a shot at life. Mm. They get an education and become responsible parents and become responsible husbands. Mm. We are able to achieve that through education. Health is going to be resolved in many ways. Mm. I am going to attack health from a public health point of view. Mm. I've already mentioned Order in the country mm -hmm. means that you can't build a house mm -hmm. where there's no water system, mm -hmm. there's no drainage, mm -hmm. there are no facilities for uh, you know, sewerage. You, you, we will not allow you to do that. There will be no drainages running with all this stuff that makes people sick when they touch it or fall into it. Mm -hmm. you, all you do is to clean up the environment where people live and then you cut out diarrhea, you cut out malaria, you cut out... Uh, you cut out um, uh, all these infectious diseases that are created by, uh, you know, dysentery, that are created by ifico, dirt, you know, lack of order, lack of systems, councils that don't take the garbage out when they should take it out. These are things that we need to work on and achieve. Then we shall reduce the pressure on the health sector that is there now because all of a sudden people will not be in hospitals that much mm -hmm. because the environment is clean yeah. and that is going to be our cure 
for the most part, mm -hmm. but we shall invest in uh, modernized hospitals and put equipment that detects sicknesses and conditions way ahead of time so that we can place people on um, regimens that are going to help them recover within good time. So all that is planned because you have systems. All that Zambians need to know about Never Smumba is that Never Smumba being president, you should be ready for clear systems of operation. The reason why Victory Ministries succeeded and became an international organization when there had never been a church organization in this country before Victory Ministries, that became what it became an international organization. It's because I created systems in the church organization. I'll give you one example. During that time, a Pentecostal pastor will have a number of members in a classroom and preach the gospel, sweating, anointing, cast out devils, collects the offering, 200 kwacha. After the offering is collected, the elders give it to Amai Busa to take the money. As they are going home, they go through the market to buy fiakuria, and they have not counted the money properly. There was no accountability. The money belongs to the pastor, and that's the kind of church I found. We decided I hired accountants in my organization. If Frank gave me 10 kwacha during those days, you can attest, if you don't attest this, Frank, then you didn't give me any money. Mm -hmm. But anyone who gave money to Victory Ministries, and it came through the normal channel, they all received a letter acknowledging that 10 kwacha. They still have those letters in their homes today. Mm -hmm. When I visit some homes, people go to the bedroom and yeah. say, look at this. It's bringing systems in place. That's why Victory Ministries became respected internationally, because our standards mm -hmm. rose. And I will raise the standards of Zambia. And we're able to become a better nation, a nation to be admired. Yeah. But you need leaders that can give you that. The youths, hundreds and thousands of youths, most of them from higher education, they're roaming the schools, the, the streets. What do you have for them? That they're watching perhaps today, are listening to you. What, what do you have for them? I think there are two things for our youth. First of all, I have followed these so-called uh, empowerment programs for our youth. I'm sorry to say that most of these are just political. They are not sustainable. Our young people are not going to benefit in a sustainable mm -hmm. manner. Our view is that, first of all, we will, we will push the education mm -hmm. for those two young people that have not had an opportunity mm -hmm. to get an education. There's no time limit for education. You can be 30, 40 and still go back to school. Mm -hmm. I will encourage the young people to go back to school. Make it easy for them to do that. Mm -hmm. Secondly, I would also encourage them in their trades mm -hmm. that they do to make sure that we provide such facilities mm -hmm. that they can continue being plumbers, they can continue being woodworkers, they can continue being electrical people, they can continue mm -hmm. being innovators in electronics and, uh, and, and um, in all the technology that has come. Mm -hmm. We are the ones to create the infrastructure for the young people to succeed. Mm -hmm. Today I was in, in Kanyama campaigning, then I find a little shack there and I stopped. I wish the guys had brought me that picture and put it on. But the, it's a shack made from sacks. There were three little boys, not more than 15 years old. Mm -hmm. And I peeped in there. I said, but if you I know we, we are a computer company. So I said, computer what? Mwisaka, you know, in Kanyama. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I looked in there, and for sure they had one computer there. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were sitting there yeah. in Kanyama. They say this is what we do for the community. They bring this thing and we give them a video, we give them a, I mean, we give them a film, we give them this, and we are creating this here. That's innovation. As president, I'll take those three young people mm -hmm. and find out where they are sitting and create an infrastructure mm -hmm. where that talent, where that innovation can be established and encouraged. The mining sector, you know, which you've made reference to, you know, is still, you know, you know most productive, you know, you know, cow in this country, for lack of a better way of putting it, we get so much from the mining in our sector. What are you going to do differently? One, the tax issue has been an emotive one. Two, even the revenue that the country gets, you know, leaves much to be desired. I tell you what, I can give you an example of uh, you know, what happens in, in Botswana. It is on production. 
okay, the, 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 the government there tells the investor, we're going to get, say, 20, 30 percent from production, all right, which is not the case now. And it's about, you know, uh, mineral royalties and, you know, other, you know, taxes in terms of, you know, revenue, you know, collection. How are you going to treat the mining sector so that this country, you know, gets what is due, you know, to it? Because what is happening right now is the invest investors are coming in here, get the copper, sell it, get the foreign exchange, and fly it. It's corruption that, hence, that happened. Hence where the foreign exchange you know, is you know, today. Frank, it is all in the development agreements that you make with these international mining investors. The good thing about asking me is because that I've been there before. Mm -hmm. uh, when I worked with President Wanawasa, he assigned me to the copper belt because I grew up in the, on the copper belt. Mm -hmm. The members of my church, mm -hmm. most of them were miners. So it's a language I understand. Mm -hmm. And the reason why we, we made uh, progress with the mines mm -hmm. when we took over with President Wana, when President Wanasa took over, is because we invested uh, into our development agreements mm -hmm. an understanding that we are going to make it easier for the investors, but they cannot escape the taxation that mm -hmm. we imposed on them. And we gave them a, a period of time when they were exempted from certain taxes, mm -hmm. but at the same time, they promised to uh, sustain a certain level of production mm -hmm. and to ensure that our people are employed who are going to continue to pay the taxes to government and after a period of time then the taxation mm -hmm. kicks in mm -hmm. look there has to be incentives if you really want people to come and invest in your country mm -hmm. but never will it happen under my administration mm -hmm. that they are going to use a plane landing in, 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 uh, somewhere in Chilwuluma in a private uh, airstrip and mm. take the stuff and take it out. We will have to guard our borders. Mm. This is not a country which is called a banana republic. This is a republic which has been established on firm foundations and structures. So we will make sure that we hide our policies mm -hmm. in the development agreements mm -hmm. and who adhere to those development agreements with the investors in the mining industry to the T. The problem we are having today and the reason we are losing billions of dollars because mm -hmm. of mismanaging the mines is inconsistent policies. Mm -hmm. There's nothing as bad as having a government that has inconsistent mm -hmm. policies. You must have predicted Mm -hmm. policies, especially when it comes to business. Because people who are investing want to make sure that in five years, this is what's going to be due to them. In three years, they're not going to pay taxes. But the fourth year, they are going to be paying these taxes. Mm -hmm. They would have already established their presence here. So for me, it goes back to the first point in our manifesto, mm -hmm. creating order in the mining industry. So that when an investor lands in Zambia, we show him this is who we are. Mm -hmm. And that's how we are going to work with you. They are not going to come with their laws. Mm -hmm. They'll find laws here. And these laws will favor Zambia and will favor Zambians. And that's really the way it is. Are you going to revisit you know, KCM, one of the biggest uh, mines, if not the biggest in this uh, you know, country, which is in problems you know, with, with the government? The government is more or less partially you know, you know, taken over. You know, how are you going to deal with this? Well, we have a position on that. I think, let me be very clear, there are many things that have been mishandled by this government, and the best way to deal with them is that once we get into government, we'll have to renegotiate these issues. Mm -hmm. We'll have to bring our policies on the table. I think that uh, the way KCM has been handled is not really in the interest of Zambians. Mm -hmm. Now, my policy, and that of our, our, of our party, mm -hmm. is that, look, the Zambians must have the bigger stake. I have been saying that it is possible for Zambians to create a conglomerate that they themselves are running in order to run a mining industry, mm. the mining industry. I am not just for foreigners to come and take over the operations. In fact, I would support Zambians who come together, help them with capital so that they can run. Because if there is a country on earth with qualified mining engineers. It's Zambia. Mm. 
if there's any manpower we should export, it should be mining engineers. Because we have had this mine since the early 20s. Mm -hmm. So why should we be waiting for somebody from, from London where they don't have mines to come and run our mines here? Mm -hmm. it, it's just ridiculous. But even to get there, there must be a process. Yeah. So for me, we will have to relook at how we are running the enterprise mm -hmm. of our mines. These mines can do better. They can be more sustainable. Mm. And I think the way they are, it's a lack of clear policy mm. that we put on the table. Even the people in government today, if you ask them, those ministers who are no longer ministers, how does the mining industry operate? They don't know. And we want to make yeah. sure that we are aware of what we're trying to Some achieve. Some of the most developed in the countries, you know, uh, started with small scale industries. India is an example. Malaysia is an example. Singapore is an example. How are we going to treat the small and medium scale you know, industries? What incentives are you going to put in there? You know, and that is some sector that most Zambians can you know, uh, benefit from and graduate to rich people. Any economy that has grown, Frank, has depended on the small scale and medium scale mm. businesses. Zambian, small scale, mm. hiring 10 people, 15 people, they are paying their taxes, the economy is growing. Mm. If we don't do that, then we cannot grow this economy. Mm. This economy is like agriculture. Agriculture is the small scale farmers that you must encourage, build up, help, support, so that the small farmers all over the country begin now to, f to look for a place for market, then government helps them with linkages for market. Mm -hmm. Then government goes and makes the feeder roads from their little farms to a place where they can deliver it somewhere, where they can get their money for their produce. Mm -hmm. It's the small scale. Now, Movement for Modi Party Democracy is a private sector driven party. Mm -hmm. That's our belief. If you remember, if you ask me, how are we going to heal this economy? You asked that question in the, at mm -hmm. the beginning. Mm -hmm. President Wanawasa, what he did, he called for a, um, a, 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 an indaba for businessmen mm -hmm. in Livingstone yeah. between the private sector and government mm -hmm. and agreed with the private sector to say this is how we are going to work together mm -hmm. to empower the uh, um, uh, private sector. Allow me to say what I'm going to say. Mm -hmm. It may be ridiculous, but that's our policy, having, taking over government. Mm -hmm. Today we are looking at a budget this year of mm. 114 billion kwacha, let's say maybe that way. Mm. And um, we make from our taxes maybe 66 billion. Mm. We shall be radical enough mm. to tell Zambians that we are going to live according to our income of 66 billion. Mm. That shopping list that you have of 114 billion, it's a wish list because the difference there you are going to go with a begging ball to Europe, to America, so that they can help you with your budget for things you wish to have. Mm. I want to use that sh shortfall to encourage the private sector to be able to take those responsibilities of infrastructure and stuff like that mm. and support them to be able to generate that money to do the deficit. Mm. But I'm not going to move this country in perpetual debt mm. and always waiting for foreigners to make us feel human. Mm. That, I'm a pan-Africanist. I would like Zambia to be a proud nation. We shall never be mm. proud until we pay for our own goods. Mm. We can't be eating other people's chickens and think that we are rich. It's time to eat vegetables mm. until you are able to afford chickens. This thing in Africans of wanting to be given things, we will start to transition this country mm -hmm. to start to live within our income. Right. We may not have everything, Frank, yeah. because we don't have 114 billion, but mm. we are able to collect 66 billion from amongst ourselves. Right. That's how we shall run this economy. You seem to articulate, you know, ideas very well. Uh, we hear a lot of ideas you know, in this country, but the major problem is implementation. I want you to deal, you, deal with that quickly, because I'll have to go on break very short. Deal with that quickly. Implementation has been a major problem in this country. Related to that, 
and you've talked about you know a government of national unity which i would like you to um you know to, uh, to expand on you could be president with less numbers of members of parliament that could give you a headache in terms of enacting laws which are extremely important to make a government work what is your response to this first of all i'll leave the first question on implementation just yeah. to say that yeah. it's it's going to be our main focus there's no need to have good policies which absolutely you can implement. but let me come to the second question i yeah. think it's extremely critical yeah. frank originally i wanted to run as independent presidential candidate really yeah and I'll explain why. And then you're not going, you're not going to have you know, members of parliament. Yeah, I didn't want yeah. to do that. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to have members of parliament. That's making your job very difficult from no, the but, start. But this is how, the only way yeah. we can cure the fruitless political environment we have now. Mm -hmm. We have many members of parliament, political parties that are doing this issue, and they have not moved the country forward. From the moment MMD handed over government, we have not moved forward. We have moved backwards. The quality of life for Zambians has gone back. I'm in the compounds now. Mm -hmm. So the question is, what are we doing? What am I trying to cure mm -hmm. by being mm -hmm. a leader of a united government? A government that when I win the election, even this year, I am running a unique campaign. Mm -hmm. I am running purely a presidential campaign. We have a few members of parliament that are running and councils on our ticket. But our focus is to provide for Zambia the greatest need of a president. Mm. And that is what MMD wants to give. But even then, informing government, I'm going to make sure that I get the best cream of Zambia to form government. Mwanawasa mm. attempted that, and I must dare say that's probably why he succeeded. Mm. But I want to go a step further. If there are good people in the U UPND, people with intelligence and understanding, I'll make them part of my cabinet. Mm -hmm. Members of MMD who are intelligent and members of parliament, I'll make them cabinet ministers. From patriotic front, mm -hmm. those with what it takes, I will appoint them because the president has power to appoint anyone from parliament. And we have so many Frank for the first time independent members of parliament that are running. This will be a hung parliament. There will be no boss in the coming parliament mm. because the members of parliament standing as independents will frustrate the old system. Mm. So what we see happening, the reason why it is better to vote for Nevers Mumba is because I am not necessarily saying we provide the members of parliament. Mm. I'm not doing that now. Mm. We are going to provide a president. And once you provide a president, it means that those interests from other independent members of parliament, mm. from UPND members of parliament who have what it takes, PF members of parliament who have what it takes, we create a government of the very best. Mm. It is that which is going to make Zambia move forward. Now, it's very difficult for partisan presidents to do what I'm willing to do. Mm. Those who just believe only their party members must become. Mm. Only their party members. And in my view, where the patriotic front has really stumbled mm. is on the choice of the quality of cabinet. Mm. I think they, they appointed more of, of campaigners mm. than qualified people. And I understand. They, I think they wanted to say anybody can be a minister, but it's not true. These are policy positions, and you get cadres to become ministers. Some of the ministers that we had in the last government, I'm sitting there saying, my God, I, why, why, Lord, why? Why? Because that guy cannot even run his own home. You understand? That's why the only thing they could do is steal because they don't have any acumen and a passion to do the right thing. There's no knowledge in them on how to run a, a particular ministry. So I am saying that the next government must be a government represented by people who have what it takes mm. to navigate Zambia through the post-COVID-19 season, which will be a unique season. Let me just stop you there before I lose my thought. Having said you could have problems with uh, in a parliament, on the other side, this president, is, I mean a Zambian president, not just President Lungu, a Zambian president, is too powerful, right? Mm -hmm. 
He's the player. He's the captain. He's the coach. He's the sports director. I mean, surely is this the way this constitution should be in a tailored? I'm sure even in your church, I mean, you travel a lot. My church, Pastor Walker travels a lot. Church runs beautifully. There are pastors, there are elders who make decisions. This constitution gives too much power to one man. Is that the way we should run a country? Absolutely not. This is why what I am putting on the table to Zambians and especially the church is that elected president, I will not have the majority in parliament. In fact, I will have very few. And that's what I want. Because you have members of parliament from PF that are on your government, members of parliament from UPND, members of parliament from the independent members of parliament. Mm. What happens now is that you cannot be a strong hand mm. because those people are going to talk to you and say, sir, we don't agree with the way you're going, so we will not vote with you on this. Mm. Then you have to sit with them until you reach consensus. That in itself limits your powers yeah. from becoming the king of kings and the lord of lords. Mm -hmm. Africa does not learn. We have given so much power to our presidents mm -hmm. that now we have become captives and we are now dancing to the tune mm -hmm. of one man, and I'm not only talking about Zambia, but all over Africa. And we must move away from this. This proposition that mm. we have made, mm. it's the first time I'm encouraging Zambians mm. to vote for a president outside all these considerations, because I am, first of all, Nevis Mumba. I'm the Nevis Mumba that you've known who has served in public service for 44 years. You know my weaknesses and my strengths. And I would not have offered myself for president if I knew I was not going to be able to yeah. do this. So I think that yeah. we will cure your concern mm. by ensuring that we bring in all these great different facets of members of parliament so that they can tell the president, if you don't do it the right way, we'll not vote with you. Very quickly, before we go on break, and I want, if possible, the viewers to, uh, you know, send in their questions or, or, you know, or, or ring in. The judiciary, another important arm of governance. They will be on trial very shortly when they look at, well, they're already looking at the issue of uh, eligibility of uh, this current you know, you know, president. This judiciary is being accused, rightly or wrongly, of not being you know, impartial. How, how are you going to put the judiciary together that is professional, which I know it's professional, right, but acceptable, doing things above board, for lack of a better way of putting it. Two things, Frank. Like I said on my launch yesterday, mm. that we will have a zero tolerance for corruption. Mm. I did announce that for us, we will make sure that we pass laws mm. where we equate a murderer to a corrupt convict. Mm. I, I'll tell you why I said that. Mm. Because the repercussions of a murderer's actions are the same as that of a corrupt person. Mm. Many of our poor people have died because a few selfish people have stolen the resources of their nations. Mm. So they will stay in jail under our leadership for not less than 30 years mm. to life imprisonment. Mm. In order to deal with that scourge and stop mm. it. But I went further to say that if a judge is implicated in corruption to give false judgment mm. and he is caught, he will be doubly punished. Mm. The punishment for the judge will be harsher than those of an ordinary person mm. based on the fact that they are the ones God has entrusted with the responsibility of adjudicating justice. Mm. So if they abrogate their responsibilities, then we make sure that these people are punished publicly, mm. never to be done. It brings me to my third point concerning your question mm. about the case in court now, about the petition. We cannot talk about the substantive case because yeah. it's in court. The only thing I can say is that it's not President Lungu who is on trial. Mm. It's not Sangwa who is on trial. Is the constitutional court which is on trial. Mm. There's nothing we require of you. We don't want you to, to make Sangwa win or ECL to win. That's not your job. Your job is to deliver justice. 
regardless of where it falls, give it. Because peace can only be sustained based on justice. Because God protects that country where the judges are just. If they say, President Lungu, you are not eligible to stand, President Lungu and the PF will be upset, but after a while, justice of life and the world will balance it out. If the court says, Sangwa, sorry, your points are not based on anything, you lose your case, and ECL qualifies to stand. In the same way, as long as it is justice which is based on sustainable um, a judgment that can be referred to in the years to come and form a, new, a society where our children will think about us. That's all the Zambians are looking for in the judges. In countries, even within the boundaries of our, of our land, Malawi here and also in Kenya, judges got excited and went a certain way because maybe they were under duress to please someone and gave a judgment that was erroneous at law. The citizens of those countries mm. refused to go with the judges. Mm. The judges don't need that in this country. They don't want Zambians to say, you know what? Thank you so much for your effort, but we're gonna defend ourselves. You are of no use. And my appeal to the judges, and I say so as a pastor, dig down in your souls and give Zambians the justice that God would give to them. Because only then can we sustain mm. this peace that we have enjoyed since independence. One question. We're going on break now for two, three minutes, five minutes, and then we come back for another 15 minutes or, or so. I'm going to ask you a question that troubled uh, President Chiluba, the late President Chiluba, me, is so raised in, you know, in peace. When President Chiluba became president, he told the country, it was going to be tough before it got better. How tough is it going to be under your tutelage, under your presidency? And when does it get better, especially for the majority? President Chiluba faced a $7 billion debt from UNIP. And he told us to tighten our belts, mm -hmm. that it was going to be tough. I'll be inheriting a $15 15 billion. billion dollar debt. We are going to tighten our belts twice as much, but we're going to get out of it. We now know how to get out of it, and we can do it quicker than we did it last time. But there will be a tightening of our belts. This is a huge debt. And as long as it stands, our people are not going to see the development they're crying for. So Frank, to answer mm -hmm. your question, we will project once we get into government about how long it could take us by looking at what was what's going to be available to us in terms of resource mm. at the at the at the at the debt that we're going to find and at the demands of those that mm. we all after we have assessed those three sections then we are going to come to the nation and work with the nation in dealing with that matter zambians have the strength to tighten their mm. belts as tightly as they can if they can trust their leaders that we're going to get out of this. What is missing now is Zambians do not trust leaders. That's why they riot when you ask them to tighten their belts. Under my leadership, they know never Smumba. You've known me for years. I have my mistakes, I have my shortcomings like anybody else, but I'll never steal from a Zambian. I want Zambia to be built, to be saved, and to become the number one country on this continent. We shall have systems, we shall have prosperity, and we shall look after our resources that not a single bar of copper and processed shall leave this country until it is processed. No timber shall leave this country in an unprocessed manner. We shall not be taking raw material out so that we can create industries in our country, provide jobs for our people. They pay their taxes and continue to sustain the economy of our country by our own resources. And I am committed to bringing in a system. And I know that maybe getting to the presidency as a person without many members of parliament looks very impossible. But I believe this is what Zambia needs now to get rid of this partisan politics. And I want to say this, 
Uh, and I'm not campaigning, but I am MMD leader. Mm -hmm. And I think that if somebody votes for PF today, they have to explain why very well. Mm -hmm. Because, and I'll talk about that a little later. If they want to uh, vote for UPND, they need to explain why. And I think we're at a place, if you can just give me one minute, mm -hmm. where I'm going to say this. The stakes for this coming election are extremely high. Mm -hmm. They are so high that it is important that every Zambian counts the cost. The way we think this election will end is not the way it's going to end. Some of you, the president you think will be president is not going to be president. We must as well just get ready for it because this is God's country. It is so difficult now to deal with this matter for PF and UPND, even MMD. I'll explain. For PF, it's complicated. For the Zambians, it's complicated. It's a f as, we, as it stands, most of the Zambian people are in trouble economically. Mm. Household income has dwindled. They are not able to sustain themselves. The political asset of Zambia is millimil. We left it at 35 kwacha. Even then they complained. It's 140, 150, 160 kwacha in Chinsali. People are barely making it. Because of COVID, many people have lost their jobs. Those who still have their jobs are not being paid in councils until after six, seven months. It's a mess. Our people are, are in pain. So, I got to go to break. You got to go to break, but I have to make this point on yeah. Mili Mil. Yeah. The Zambian people retired, you, you nip because of Mili Mil. The Zambian people retired MMD because of similar conditions, but especially what was called corruption. If the Zambian people, the UPF knows this, if the Zambian people fired MMD when the economy was good, how will they vote for PF this time around unless Zambians have changed or God has two sets of laws? But if it's the same God, the same Zambians, the way I know them, to vote for PF under these circumstances, we had more money, Frank, than yeah. PF. We had more money, MMDs, than PF going to the election. Mm -hmm. But even with that money, the Zambians said, sorry, we have an opportunity to vote for somebody else. And I wanted to say this because the stakes are high. That is why we need to be fair in the manner we treat each other, make this election equitable, and level the playing field so that the outcome could still keep Zambia together as a united nation. This is Frank on Kamnet. You know, my guest you know, is uh, Dr. Nebas Mumba, you know, the president of uh, New Hope MMD. We'll take a break of three minutes. We've really eaten into your, into your time. You know, I think we only have about 10, 15 minutes you know, when we come back for a couple of questions. Join us very shortly. Don't move. Let it sink in. We'll be back. Kamne TV is here to entertain, educate, and inform you. Catch Rise and Thrive at 0730 hours every Saturday. Fresh and new praise and worship comes Monday to Friday at 8 hours. Kids need to be glued to the TV every weekday at 09 hours for their favorite cartoons. Off the pitch with the boys as they talk about sport on Saturdays at 0930 hours. Remember, we are also here to entertain you with our different varieties of movies every weekday at 10 hours. Join Pastor Victoria and Moses Chilua with Healing Word Ministries International Church Live Sermon every Sunday at 10 hours. Katamanda brings to you another journey of gospel ministers on Saturdays at 10.30 hours. The verdict comes to your screens at 17.45 hours. Join the Revival Harvest Church every Sunday at 18.30 hours. Every Monday to Saturday, join us on the news desk at 12 hours as we bring to you the midday news and at 19.30 hours Central African time every day for the main bulletin. The ministry with Pastor Moses Chilua comes every Friday at 20.45 hours. On Mondays, it's your favorite national matters at 20.45 hours. Wednesday and Thursday, Pastor Victoria and Moses Chiluba are on partnership of greatness with different spiritual teachings at 20.45 hours. And Frank on Camnet comes to your screen every Tuesday at 20.45 hours. Camnet TV, not just another channel. 
2021 has been described as a highly politically charged year. This is because every five years, the country goes to the polls and that five years elapses. With only a few months remaining down to the ballot, the battlefield to appear on the ballot is becoming fertile. A lot of people are expressing interest of appearing on the ballot. In all this, our interest is to put the duty bearers, the leaders and those aspiring to task by asking the relevant questions. If you're an aspiring candidate, be it councillor, mayor or member of parliament, get in touch with us to get yourself on the verdict. We go beyond speculation in dealing with policy and governance issues. The right questions are asked to help you make a verdict. For more details, you can call us on 0962 965883 0979 or email us info at camnetvafrica.com Terms and conditions apply. Join us on Camne TV every Monday, Tuesday, Thursday and Friday at 17.45 hours on a new program dubbed The Verdict. Remember that Camne TV is not just another channel. This is Frank on, you know, you know Camnet. And uh, my guest, uh, you know, this evening is uh, Dr. Nevas Mumba, you know, who is uh, the president of uh, New Hope, you know, MMD. You did allude to the fact, you know, that this election is significant. Just how significant is it? You know, before we get in one or two callers and, you know, messages, please you know, get ready for that. Well, this is really what I was trying to explain yeah. towards the end. It's very significant because it is interesting to see how Zambians are going to react mm -hmm. to the current challenges they're going through. Mm -hmm. The political leaders, the PF, the UPND and MMD, we are all aware of how significant it is. Mm -hmm. It is for this reason that when you look at the three candidates, for instance, mm -hmm. you look at uh, President Lungu, Obviously, he wants to continue as president, mm. and he will do whatever is in his power mm. to make sure that he retains that position. Mm. Then he wants to retain the position. We have my brother, H.H., mm. who has run several times. Yeah. He is also swearing upon whatever to say, I want this thing now. Mm. So there are levels of desperation. But there is also never spoon, but I'm not young anymore. Mm -hmm. I've been in politics for 24 years, mm -hmm. and I have fought every fight that needs to be fought. Mm -hmm. And there's the Christian fraternity there that is saying time has come for us to have somebody from our side to be able to navigate the Christian nation. Mm -hmm. So there's also a passion and a desire for Nevis Mumba mm -hmm. to now become the seventh president of this country. Mm -hmm. So it's that passion mm -hmm. in all the three of us including the other presidents that are there. That is making this election unique. Mm. And so I think to answer your question is significant mm. and that's why we want a level playing field so that we do not blame anybody at the end of this, of this election. Do we have any messages or any calls if you'd like to call us? Thanks Mr. Mumba for your powerful words. I see and believe that you are the leader because leadership comes from God and if Zambia can have leaders like you, truly Zambian people will be saved, not those others who are forcing themselves to be leaders while no leadership in their hearts. That's from uh, uh, Royson in Kasempa. Right, any more messages? I have one thing that has bothered me. You were featured on ZNBC on Sunday interview. You mentioned that you'd consider working with PF. My question is, on what basis, please take note of all those uh, you know, comments. My question is, on what basis is that, you know, to, to work with, uh, you know, with, with PF? Um, let's go on to another one. So we delve into, into those two. Okay, I just love the way you articulate the issues, Dr. Mumba. Um, I'm a Zambian youth, and it's obvious that the man has vision for this country, uh, and this is the man we are yearning in a form. I think if you change the party, perhaps formulating a new one, you'd influence us more. Mm, changing from MMD. Do we have another one? 
Right. Could you d uh, delve into uh, those two critical ones? And, uh, we, have a, we have a caller. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Good evening, we lost the caller. Please, and if you'd like you know, to call you know, and ask a question you know, to my guest, then you're free you know, to do you know, that. Could you delve into those you know, two uh, critical issues? The other one was just... First of all, praise. I think the last, the last question, um, yeah. my advice is that do not lose the opportunity to vote according to you for the best leader that you've seen just because of the political party. A political party is an engine that starts and can be removed anytime. What we are looking for is quality leadership. MMD has had different presidents. Some presidents have been better than others. So you cannot say you will not vote for me because I'm standing on MMD. Because MMD didn't make me. God made me and God makes all the other leaders be who they are. A party is just a vehicle. And once I am in charge of it, it's our values that we carry that shall influence the party. Let me take up, you know, you know the, the caller. Good evening. Hello. Good evening, sir. What is your name? Yes, I'm Joseph Mbapai from Kitwe. Yes, Joseph. How is Kitwe this evening? Kitwe is cool. Excellent. Please go ahead. Yes, my question is to the president. Yes. When you are appointed into the office, mm -hmm. I go to read up into the city of Pagarize and the threat that we are expecting now. That is my question. Thank you very much. And please, you know, I keep on calling if you like, if you, if you have any issues, you know, to, uh, to raise the emergence of Kajarism. I said it yesterday during the launch, and I want to take this opportunity to repeat that, that because of this unity government I'm talking about, where everyone must have a stake in this country, including our youth. Mm. There will be no cadres that will be more special than others. Mm. There will be no special bus stops for one political party because they're in government. Mm. There will be no market controlled by one political party. Those things will not happen under our leadership. Every young person is going to have equal access to the opportunities that this country provides for every Zambian. You are not going to use your political party as a means mm -hmm. to abuse others. There will be no political militias mm -hmm. under my leadership, where you have a militia dressed in military attire, trying to compete with the police, trying to compete with the soldiers. No, that hooliganism is what has destroyed African democracies. We will not have that. We will rather deploy these young people into useful activities where they can be responsible fathers, they can be responsible husbands, and run their homes and give them skills and create an infrastructure for them to succeed. No, there will be no cadarism. Now, I was very surprised, Frank, to go to a country next to us by the name of DRC, mm. a country that Zambia has looked down upon mm. that they are not an organized country and it's so big that you know, there's no order. Can you believe that they don't have cadarism? Really? No. They don't have cadarism in, in Congo. You can try to become militant and stuff like that, but there's no cadarism. How have they dealt with that? Well, I think that there's an understanding that Congo belongs to everyone. Mm. And uh, if you try to act like you own because your party is in power, they'll kill you. You know, they'll kill you at a lower level because every Congolese believes that's their country. Mm. So you can't say me because you go to a small station where the minibuses stop and you find PF flags mm. and they are charging minibus owners money mm. before they can load. What is that? Who, who, are they council? Who mm. gives them that authority? Why don't they deal with them? That kind of disrespect for the rule of law is what makes the outside world think we are junk nations. Mm. We are banana republics. Mm. So under our leadership, we want to give opportunities to the youth that are sustainable. I want them to be respectable because my background yeah. is humble, Frank. Right. I came from Chinsali, mm. grew up without shoes, mm. and I have seen what it means to be given an opportunity to later on become vice president of a country. Right. It's opportunities given to our young people, and I want to do that. Right. Do we have any messages? You know, any more messages? You know, um, how do you intend to revive the energy sector, especially? The petroleum industry, which seemed to be 
dying a natural death. If I may add, there's also a lot of corruption in that uh, inner sector. Anything else? Anything else? Right. Delve, there's a, there's a caller. Good evening. Good evening. Hello. Good evening. Your, your name, please? Uh, I'm, I'm Patrick. Yes, Patrick. Uh, what is your question? Yes. Uh, good evening to you and good evening to Dr. Buba. Patrick, good evening. How are you? I'm good to be fine, thank you. I've got the two uh, important points. Yes, sir. Go, go ahead. Well, I'm always here people talking about Zambia as a Christian nation. My question is, was well, Zambia not a Christian nation before the uh, Chiruba declaration? It was a Christian nation. The reason why Chiruba declared Zambia a Christian nation, I know the answer and I have it. I can give it to you. Please go ahead. Secondly, <laughs> the, the, debt, the Zambian debt that you talked about, it's not even 15 billion. If you read the report from World Bank, it said it was 28 billion. Can you verify that? Thank you so much. Thank you, you know, very much. Quickly delve into that. Yeah, I, I think I'll be short here. Uh, first of all, I think I understand that um, Zambia was declared by a president as a Christian nation and enshrined it in the preamble of the Constitution. That makes it different from when it was not declared a Christian nation. So, yes, one of the reasons why President Chiluba actually declared it a Christian nation, the word is declare is because it was already a Christian nation. Mm. So he declared that we are a Christian nation. If it was not a Christian nation, he would not have declared it a Christian mm. nation. Mm. So I, I think that's put aside. There's a question on the energy sector. Mm. The energy sector, like the economy, we, we will have to sit down and have an endeavor on how we're going to deal with this matter. It's the corruption that has paralyzed the energy sector. For instance, when you take over government as a party, there are certain sectors, and energy sector is one of them, where all these good people and criminals rush to the presidents to say we will supply the oil. So they have to disable in Deni mm -hmm. so that they can empower some criminals or people who want to make money by mm -hmm. supplying oil and uh, fuel straight to the Zambian market. And we need to find a way in which Zambians are going to be protected in the manner in which the sector is run. And it's not only uh, uh, oil that we're talking about. We're talking about electricity and what has happened to it. That today the country with so much electricity resource is having load shedding that took so long to continue to deal with. So those are issues that I believe we can deal with as we move forward by simply adjusting our policy positions in the energy sector. And you see the difference in that regard. Place the Zambians at the forefront of this sector. And then the question of the debt. The first three years ago when I responded concerning the escalating debt and we advised government to stop the kind of borrowing that will implicate the nation. I was criticized, mm. called names by certain non-newspapers. Because at that time, I said, Patrick, you, I'm sure you're listening, we actually computed that the debt we had was $33 billion. Mm. And we had receipts, we had information, documentation from the Ministry of Finance, knowing that we have governed before. And we have a lot of people there. So we computed their own records and we came to 33 billion. That's two and a half years ago. We threw it into the media space and we were criticized. That is the time when I said that the, the local debt or the domestic debt would be at 17 billion dollars. Then if you add, I mean, if the foreign debt was a $17 billion, you add the domestic debt, you come to the figures that we are talking about. Now, President, um, the Minister of Finance at that time was my brother, uh, Felix Mutati. And we wrote a letter to him asking him to, to, to disapprove our figures. And he couldn't disapprove. We wrote the second letter 
asked him to disapprove, he refused to respond because he couldn't respond. Mm -hmm. We went to the Bank of Zambia governor, Mr. Kaliaria, who is not there now, and asked him this question. His answer was, my dear brothers, I cannot answer that question. I'm not constitutionally mandated. Mm -hmm. Go back to the Minister of Finance. So this question is a real question. We are only quoting $15 billion because that's what the government is saying. But we know that it's more than $15 right. billion. Make, dollars. Makes the job you know, even more difficult. Do we have uh, any more you know, messages? You know, uh, how many times are Zambians going to tighten bells? Is it each and every time with a new president, by Shimwenya and Chingola? Any, anything else? Mr. President, when voted into power, are you going to reserve the appointment of constitutional judges to the president since we have seen that confusion you know, is uh, emanating from uh, you know, uh, constitutional you know, judges? Anything else? Right. Can you delve into those? Yeah. And before you do that, we've got a, you know, a caller. Good evening. Hello? Good evening. Yeah, good evening. Sir. Your name, please. Good what is your, what's your name, Good sir? Evening. What's your name? What's your name? Yes, Joseph, go ahead quickly, please. Yes, yes. Well, uh, I like what you said about the very very cut you off. I was just wondering to say, you know, as you said, you know, 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 you I can't hear him. Thank you very much, you know, agriculture. Yeah, in fact, you said you were going to ask me about that. Yes. So I guess that's what's coming back. Yeah. First of all, you said which which sector Sectors, would yeah, I going focus to drive on, the, uh, the economy. which is going to drive the economy? Yeah. I'll answer it in two parts. Obviously, it's agriculture because mm. it accounts for 80 percent of our people. Mm. They are all involved in the agricultural sector. So it becomes the obvious focal point mm. to develop the economy or to, to heal the economy. Mm. Um, but before I come to it on how we are going to do it, which I've already touched on, in all these matters, one thing I really find complicated is this what I call the raw politicians saying that the, we shall do this for agriculture, we shall do this mm. in this, and they fail to do it. You know why those politicians fail to do it? The problem is not agriculture. We try vouchers in agriculture, they, they are corrupt, they steal the, 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 the money. You try the input system that they steal the money. The problem is not that we don't know what can drive our economy. We all know that agriculture will. We know that tourism after COVID-19 will go back to where it should be. We know about all these you know, uh, drivers of the economy. The problem of Zambia, like many African countries, it's the systems that are broken down. They don't work, and therefore corruption is rife. That is why our first point in our Fresh Start Manifesto is to place order back in this country so that corruption has no space. Corruption only breeds where there is confusion, where there is no order. That's why they keep disorder so that corruption can continue. Once you create pathways of operation, it becomes difficult to steal. That's what we're going to do. And so, Agriculture, coming back to it, we are going to enhance this sector in many ways like we did under Mwanawasa. We had successful bumper harvests and we had made sure that when the farmers produced the produce, we bought it through FRA time -shastly. We paid them in good time so that they could reinvest their money into the next season and take care of their families. And that's how the agricultural sector grew under the Levi Mwanawasa administration. We will echo those policies that we had during that time. How do we do that? It's the small scale farmers that are the key and the magic to the resuscitation of the agricultural sector. 
We make sure we empower them. We work with them, help them find market, create you know, um, you know, feeder roads where they can move their goods to the next marketplace and be interested in them in order for them to produce enough food for our country and enough for export. It shall be the gold for our country. Do we have any more messages, you know, for my guest? Briefly, sir, you have uh, talked of the quality of MPs and ministers and very soon will be electing parliamentarians to represent us in parliament. What's your advice to everyone across the country who will be voting pertaining to the quality of MPs and councillors? I mean, in what qualities, qualifications should we, the electorate, be looking for? Anything else? You have articulated issues so well. How are you going to motivate the demotivated civil service? Anything else? No. Um, evening, uh, Doc, kindly comment on the impasse between GRZ and resident doctors amid the many funds donated during this COVID for frontliners. Grace Musimuko. A very important you know equation mr. president how can I access the copy of the new hope MMD manifesto Isaac Zulu Lusaka yeah well uh, I hope I can uh, remember that the quality of members of Parliament is critical if you put in people that cannot even pronounce their own names <laughs> and make the members of power, which is common in Africa. Yeah. You, you can elect anybody just because he's a good campaigner. Um, we are going to produce a list of 156 recommended members of parliament. They're already on the ballot on different political parties, mm. including the independents. That list, we have scrutinized them to be men with a background of character. We we'll recommend that list to the churches, three mother bodies and encourage believers to consider those members of parliament, not just MMD members of parliament, because they are good and quality with character, you know, candidates that are standing as independents, that are standing as members of parliament on other political parties. We have written down and continue to write a list that we will publicize and will campaign for them, we will support them logistically, some of them who are not able to make it, if we believe is a good candidate, will invest even resource or finance in them. Why? Because we must push for some quality in our MPs. That's number one. Number two, um, on the civil servants, I don't yeah. remember the question. There's a, a, a motivating, you know, where the civil servants were demotivated. Yeah, I, I think the civil servants are demot uh, de demotivated. demotivated for many reasons. Yeah. Um, it's not just because they're not getting the money they want to get. Uh, the, the economy has contracted. Uh, the benefits they used to have are gone. Uh, the special privileges they used to have are gone. And therefore, we have to redraw this civil service and ensure, first of all, we maximize on performance. We maximize on the ability to perform but also to equitably give them what is due to them so that they can know that they are the most important in running the business of government. And we want to have many seminars with them. In fact, once I win the election, I am going to have several sessions with the entire civil service where we shall talk about this new approach and a fresh start, which is the theme for our campaign, a fresh start. And to introduce to them how we're going to start afresh in healing not only the economy of our country, but in healing the very country and the spirit of our country. So we will invest in such kind of meetings. The GRZ yeah, doctors. and doctors yeah. in dispute. Our answer is short. Government, you cannot win. You cannot win in this battle. Sit down with the resident doctors pay them what is due to them. The money we are spending on these elections as political parties is so much. There's so much money that is being thrown around with cutters moving with cartons of money just to do politics. I think that we do have resource which we could pay. All they're asking for the resident doctors is what is due to them. And no intimidation shall move them. My advice, 
as leader of the movement for multi-party democracy, but also as a pastor, pay them their money. Just give it to them. Do it we shall the, be well. Do we have the last slot of uh, you know contributions? You know, then we can close in here. I, Dr. Mumba, I have faith that one day you shall rule this nation. Never give up. You have come a long way. I'm confident if given an opportunity, you'll be capable of fixing the economy. Anything else? What do you say about these transfer in the councils? Mukashkumbi, umlomekumbi. Anything else? Yeah, let's deal with that. Then I can close with a couple of questions here. I think it's a question of policy of government. Um, once government decides, our goal basically as MMD New Hope, we place tremendous value on family. Mm -hmm. And we would never encourage a system that separates husband and wife. Mm -hmm. That is something we would look into almost immediately mm -hmm. to cure. Talk about uh, the human beings. I see that most of you are going with uh, uh, women Hello? as uh, running mates. Is this Hello? deliberate? Is this value addition? Well, first of all, I, I think that there's nothing wrong with going with a female or a male. I've gone with a male. Mm -hmm. I, I, I have uh, many women in my team. Yeah. Um, and I could use anybody. Mm -hmm. uh, we have more women in my team than we have men. Mm -hmm. So we don't have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. But um, I think mm -hmm. it's, uh, it, I cannot even think, it's not tokenism. Yeah. I think the women folk in our country have earned their place. Right, let me take in. Yeah. in, in they have in, in, earned in, their place. Let me take in our final caller. Good evening. Hello. Your name, please. Uh, my name is, my name is Samson Chaya. Ch I'm from Chilabombo. I was Chilabombo this evening, Samson. Chilabombo is fine and I will start Well, the okay, is good. You know, what is your question? Thank you very much. You know, very quickly deal with that. Yeah, let me start yeah. with that. First of all, I have I've made a proposal. Of course, we're in a political competition, and I'm on television now. I've made a, a proposal that voting for PF or UPND will not solve our problems as a country. The hatred that exists between these two parties is not going to end when UPND wins. Because PF is going to say, you made our lives hard, we're going to make your life hard. And UPND is going to say, we have the guns of the police and the military. If you continue behaving that way, we'll sort you out. The problem of violence will continue because it has been accelerated. It's no longer politics. It's now hatred for each other, which is costing the lives of the innocent youth. MMD has demonstrated from the time we were in government, and now so this time, as pastor, who is leader of this party, violence is not in our vocabulary because it does not solve the problems of our country. Therefore, voting MMD into government can assure Zambians that the days of violence will be behind us. And especially, Frank, if we put in place the type of government that I'm talking about, where other representatives from other political parties are appointed in my government they can express their misgivings within cabinet 
and we can resolve them because we are running the country together. So that in itself would diffuse this interest in violence. And the reason violence exists is when one group closes out another and wants to be the only ones enjoying the benefits of the nation. And that is why anger comes up. We go to a by-election, to an election, you want to campaign, they arrest you, and somebody from the ruling party is allowed to do the same thing and they are not arrested. So these are the, the, the sources of violence. And if you place in, play, in, in office leaders that are going to be careful that they create a Zambia for all Zambians, it immediately reduces the tension that leads to violence. They can, you can be rest assured that under my leadership, violence will be a thing of the past. Compl well, there will still be violence, but yeah. it will not be propagated by the party in government. A couple of you know, issues, and very, very you know, you know, you know, quickly. My good friends, uh, you know, ZMBC, and I spent a lot of time there. Every time, you know, where President would be, you know, talks about ZMBC, we're going to change, we'll ensure that ZMBC saves everybody. They get into government, nothing changes. The status quo, you know, continues very quickly. ZMBC. I thought Frank would be the one to answer that question. I mean, no, I mean, you, crea I, um, you created that ZMBC. I, I, uh, yeah, but <laughs> it, I, yeah, I, I, don't want to, I don't want to say much about yeah, my that's colleagues, right. but I'm in private in way, you know, media right now. Yeah, yeah. no, uh, it's a serious issue. Yeah. It's a serious issue. Yeah. Uh, and it's a failure of our system mm. that we condemn the government in place about the way they manage Daily Mail, Times of Zambia, and mm. ZNBC. That it's just, a vuvu, these are vuvuzelas of government. Mm. And, um, you know, to place me on television, uh, you know, it's almost a miracle. Yeah. And uh, so I, I think that I can only promise for myself. Mm. I'm very careful on what I promise, because if I don't fulfill it, mm. I'm not only offending you, Frank, offending but God. God is also involved in yeah. that. And I truly want to go to heaven. I just, yeah. I, I don't want to lose it just because of politics. Yeah. So. I am going to be committed to the values of democracy, that the more people participate in ZNBC and the public newspapers, the better it is for the running of this country. So they should not expect that from me. Somebody said, asked the question that you didn't give me a chance to answer mm. about, he heard me on ZNBC talking about working PF, with the PF. Working with PF. I never said that. What I did say, though, when he, I was asked that, are you able to work with PF? My answer was, I am not the one who makes that decision. Mm. That is, again, it's about democracy. Mm. MMD is the most democratic party in this country. And I said, if the National Executive Committee or the mm. convention mm. decides that they are ready to work with any political party, mm. as long as it's a decision of mm. the National Executive Committee, I mm. oblige by it. There are 66 members of the National Executive Committee, and I'm just one of them. So I cannot stand on ZNBC and say, yes, now we are mm. going to work with PF, or we are going to work with this party. No, I can't do that. I don't have that power. Yeah. The power is vested in the yeah. National Executive Committee. That's the point I was yeah. trying to make. A, a quick one. There are some people have complained, you know, that the Socialist Party and the leader are decampaigning another opposition party in the name of UPND. Your quick comment on that? Well, listen, in a democracy, in a democracy, and the reason you have several political parties mm. is because our views and values are different. Mm. And I don't have to ac agree with the Socialist Party because both of us are in opposition. Yeah. No, no, no. I don't have to agree with um, uh, mm. the UPND just because we're in the opposition. Mm. No. Then we narrow the reason right. for being in opposition. Then we might as well just be one bunch believing mm. in one thing against one political party. But mm. MMD has its own set of values. We have talked about violence. We don't believe in violence. Mm. You know, the two political parties have heightened that violence to levels we, we will never wish to see in our party. Mm. So when it comes to that, we will not agree with yeah. th them. So I think uh, Fred Membe or Socialist Party, even uh, President HH, they're free to differ mm. with any other. Mm. And that's real democracy and that is life. Right. A quick one. You know, um, you have talked about the significance of these elections, uh, make or break elections, 7 million, you know, uh, registered as voters what would it take you know to bring these people to the uh, voting you know uh, poll i think two things first of all i think zambians must feel that their vote is going to count mm. that entails that the ecz 
gets a little bit more of trust mm. from the Zambian people. Mm. Currently, they have a huge deficit in trust. Mm. That they're able to run an election on a level playing field, and uh, they need to start to answer the co to the concerns mm. of the people. And their first point of answering is on these banned rallies to ensure that these rallies are not being conducted by some and others are being stopped. And in any case, to define what a rally is so that this election can be equitable as we go to it. Mm -hmm. That's number one. I think Zambians will come in their numbers because there are issues on the table. Mm. The stakes, like I said in the beginning, are high. Yeah. And any time the stakes are high, you can see in the United States yeah. in the last election, mm. because of uh, President Trump, the turnout of 88 something million voters mm. was really unprecedented because there was something at stake. Mm. They wanted to deal with the question of President Trump. Those who were on President Trump's side, those who were against him, the emotions were high. Right. But I can say the emotions in Zambia are even higher. And I think that people will turn out All right, we, we got about two, three minutes. And uh, last but one, if you win, you will inherit a divided country on economic grounds, on social grounds, religion, and worse, tribal. How do you hope to unite the country? Zambians can, can trust that I will provide equitable um, coexistence mm -hmm. in the country my insistence on being free to appoint to cabinet people from other political mm. persuasions mm. speaks of my views about how to work this country into a unified country. Mm. Um, it is the same with tribe. You can talk about tribe all you want in this country, but you never associate tribe mm. with Nevis Mumba. Mm. I've been a preacher in this country for 44 years. Mm. I have worked with everyone across the board. Mm. And therefore, it will never come out of me. And wherever I see, I see tribalism, I'll kill it. Because mm. it does not enhance productivity. Mm. And I've said, even to my fellow Bemba people, who says, mm. I said, no, that's not enough. Mm. Don't vote for me because I'm Bemba. That's an insult. Vote for me because I qualify. Mm. Vote for me because I'm sharp. I understand the problems of my country. Don't vote for me because of tribe. It's almost an insult. That is so basic. It's like you're insulting me. Give me something more that, yes, I'm your tribe, but I have the capacity to run this country. So because of the way I'm disposed to tribalism, it will not exist in its current form under our leadership. Right. I want to ask you why. You want the people to vote for you. You've tabulated that, you articulated that very well. My final question, it's usually not on my notes. What are you struggling with when you go to bed? You're going to bed tonight. You go to bed every time. What are you struggling with? And as a man of the caller, what are you discussing with, with God? I'm discussing some real critical matters, including last night. Mm. I think that the church has prepared someone, mm. I've been prepared by the church for the job before me. And everything points to the fact that the ground is set. Finally, Zambia is a Christian nation. Mm. Finally, the values of Christianity are being espoused in this nation. What is missing is to have more Christians mm. to hold this nation with the values of God. Mm. But we have a problem. The problem is the electoral process. Like you have put it in the beginning. They fight the righteous to get them out of the way. Mm. My question to God is that, Lord, you have promised that we will win this election. But how shall it be? It's a question of how does God want to do this? Because when you look at it humanly speaking, those who only read newspapers and make the analysis based on what they hear. Oh, our kwetefitenge fingi nivalia, our kwetendama nivalia, but the campaign nivalia waka wina. So those people have this limited view that God doesn't exist. They believe that wherever the wind is going, that's where the victory goes. But not even Zambian political history supports that. 
because in the beginning, in 64, the wind was going for Nkumbula, but Kaunda became president. In 1991, the wind was going for Arthur Winner, but Chiluba got it. Mm -hmm. in, 19, uh, in 2001, the wind was going towards Mazoka, but Mwanawasa got it with 2%. Mm -hmm. in, uh, in, uh, when Rupia Banda came in, the wind was going for, uh, for anybody else but not Rupia Banda. He was in Chipata, mm -hmm. not even in line. But eventually he came in and became president. The same thing with ECL. ECL was not even on the list, mm -hmm. you know, but he, uh, he rose and surpassed all the older people mm -hmm. and became president. There has never been a predictable president since independence. Mm -hmm. I also believe in this election that the church is going to turn the tables. I, I, I am totally convinced they may look disorganized now, they may look unsure now, but the church believes that the season to change government is now. So my discussion with God is that God open the eyes of the understanding of your people to know that they cannot have something, something that, is not, that is good without sacrificing in order to get it. And I am confident those who fear God across this nation have made up their mind or they are making up their minds that let's place Nevis Mumba as president mm -hmm. for these reasons, mm -hmm. not because he's just a Christian, but because he's capable of running this country. Why? Because without hesitation, it is true that except for President Lungu, mm -hmm. I remain, of all those that are running, the most senior, mm -hmm. uh, especially in the opposition, held the most senior position more than anybody else, even in how long I've been in politics. So I know I'm ready for this job, but we have to trust God that he's the one who's going to make a way on how it's going to happen. Thank you for coming on our show. Um, we're wearing more or less the same colors. Uh, I don't Blue. know whether this is a coincidence or is it because we both... Um, well, I'm a son of Reverend. <laughs> uh, you, should, you should have been preaching. You're, you're, you're a preacher, man. Yeah, but you have done so well for yourself, Frank. I mean, you didn't preach like me, but you preached to millions. Yes, I uh, have been doing this for the last 50 years for one simple reason. Uh, mine is a calling like you. You know, it's a, it's a service which I love a lot. And uh, yes, that's why I keep on telling people, do your very best. God will do the rest. Thank you for appearing on my show, mm -hmm. and God bless you. Thank you, Frank. God bless you. And to the viewers, thank you for joining us tonight. This has been Frank on Camden. My guest, Dr. Nevis Mumba, President, New Hope, MMD. Thank you for watching. On behalf of my production in our, in our team, the executive producer, Pastor Chiluba and Mrs. Chiluba, you, the viewers, thank you. I repeat again, this is an amazing country. The only thing that you can do is to do your very best. And the rest, go to do. Thank you for watching. Good night to you all.